Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got something a little bit different. An Anschutz shootout. The old versus the new. Now in front of you you've got a Anschutz 1710 Calvi which I would call my long-range daylight sniping weapon for vermin control. It's also good for shooting off the bench. Um, it's got a, well, we'll start at the front. It has on it a Scirocco silencer from Edgar Brothers. It's an 18 inch stainless steel barrel. <coughs> the bipod we're using is a Atlas PRS. Uh, we've got 10 round mags. The scope is a IOR Lutas, which is uh, first focal plane, floating dot reticle, and it's sat in a Contessa Picatinny rail and IOR mounts with a ground total of 50 MOA of cant, which means I can dial that thing out to 440 meters without using any holdover. Uh, it's got the Kelby carbon stock with the adjustable cheek riser. It has a two-stage trigger. I'm guessing it's around around half to three quarters of a pound. I've never put a measure on it because I don't own one. We've got an adjustable rear bag riser, which we use for both rifles. And the ammunition we are shooting today is CCI small game subsonic hollow point. Now we're going to start off at 50, and then we're going to go to 100 and two meters so that's the old now the new kid on the block now hopefully you can see that quite well that's the Anschutz 1761 now we'll start at the front again it's got a sack silencer it has a 18 inch molly chrome barrel not a stainless one it is a lighter profile <laughs> then we got the ah uh, that's no, not that list that is a harris bipod now with this rifle you get four triggers to choose from from the factory and i have the light single stage trigger uh, something else about this rifle that makes it quite unusual for answers, you can switch the barrels. You can have 2.2, two, 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 two mag and a 17 HMR. There's a few things different to this than the box standard. The bottom metal, if you'd like to call it that, is uh, aluminium. They ship with uh, plastic, believe it or not. I didn't like the idea of that. On top we have got the Anschutz Picatinny rail which is unfortunately flat, zero MOA and on that we have a Hawk Frontier uh, 5 to 25 by 56 first focal plane uh, a sort of standard Christmas tree type of reticle and that is sat in a set of Burris MOA adjustable mounts now I zeroed it the other day for this ammunition and I'm hoping, as I set it to zero, but I didn't redo the zero stop, I'm hoping I'm on the right zero, else it's going to go high. So we're going to kick off with this one at 50. It has been zeroed for this ammo. The other gun is zeroed for SK long range match, which kind of has a very, very similar impact point when the silencer's on to this. This is why I picked this ammo. And it also shot well in the wind. Anyway, let's see if you can see this. This is my wind conditions and my dope for 102 meters, which will go on to after the 50. But what I'm really looking to see is both guns are cold and clean. They've both been cleaned. Just living down in Cornwall, we've got a salty environment, so it doesn't do the barrels any good. So we're going to see if there's any noticeable difference in these two guns at 50 and then we'll move it out to 102. Uh, one thing I would say for the stainless steel 1710, 
it may shoot a tiny tiny bit better with its preferred ammo to the 1761 but we're not talking a lot um, but it is less ammo picky lucky enough they seem to like this ammo but we're about to find out for real so I shall set the camera up looking at the target you'll get to see my ugly mug behind the gun we'll see if the new kid on the block can do much to the old girl as I said let's make sure you get that that's the arrow we're using we'll start off and see how we go now to find the target Make sure the tripod's clear of where the gun needs to be. A bit of adjustment. See if we can get you in on the target. So we have some rabbit silhouettes. And the first shots will be at the red dots. Oops, let's get this. So the red dots will be our first target. Yeah, you can see me there. So I think we're on, the 1761 is on the left. Blue, come here. And we do have a little bit of wind. I won't be dialing for any of the wind. I'll be holding. So let's put them there. So first five out of this one on the target. Sure the gun's level on the target make sure I pick the right one so left hand no sorry right hand rabbit and I'm gonna go for the red dot so this is cold and clean and we'll see what we get Well, that weren't too bad. Cold and clean, that would have been a kill. So, now for the headshot. We're going to see what this thing groups like. See if we get much point of aim. That was a little bit low, I suppose, and to the right. So, eye shot. Let's see what it groups like. That's dropped considerably low to where I thought it should have been. More like it. Hopefully it'll settle down in a second. So that would have been two confirmed kills. And another one. It's shooting slightly high. Well, the last three have gone in about a quarter of an inch. So that, that's my first five. What I'm hoping to see is that the stainless barrel version doesn't have so much shift. Now, if you look just underneath the ear, there's what looks like a kidney shaped thing. We'll try it on that for five. Okay, that's just underneath the eye. I'm not holding for wind at all. Okay, see that one. It's walking back in now as it's barrel settling down with a bit of bedding and leading in. Two. 
Okay, so I would say, in those conditions, that's shooting about I would imagine about three quarters of an inch which is nothing to shout about so at least those in the right place come here please now we'll try the Kelby Blue, come here same thing cold bore shot at the red now this has been scrubbed to within two of its life just the other day so same scenario cold bore at the red dot and then we go to the eye no adjustment of the scope let's see what this one does Good elevation, cold and clean. As I said, this one is zeroed for SK long range match, and it does have a pretty good. Now, we're going to go for the eye for five or four, and then move down below the ear. Let's see what it shoots like. Two, three, last one. Well, that's not shooting particularly good either. That's around an inch. So there's a spot just under the red dot. We'll put the last five in there, see if it settles in. Dead hit. gone through the same hole near enough same hole that's free or a bit of horizontal be my last one just looking about a half inch group so far so I think we have a clear winner there which is the Kelby and as I said it, it doesn't seem so fussy on the bullets and it's just had a really good scrub. So, Kelby takes that one. What was my elevation? 2.4, I believe it was. So that's 2.4, but we're gonna leave it, leave, it, leave it stand while I shoot the other one, because the biggest thing with a hunting rifle is you don't want a cold bore shift. So, from what I've seen of these, you don't really you get a clean bore shift, but you don't really get a cold bore shift when it's dirty. So I've dialed that up to 2.4. That should be okay. Then the other one should be a little bit, maybe 2.5. Here's an odd thing for you: the 1710s with a stainless barrel. I mean, they're both 18 inches, and I've chronographed various rounds through both of them. And these seem to run a little bit faster. 10, 
to 30 feet per second faster. Don't ask me why, but that's just an odd fact. So, 10 rounds now, 100 meters. And we'll see how this does. So, I'm trying to <laughs> have a real life sort of unbiased opinion on the two rifles and as to how well they will shoot. This one is shot exceptionally well with match ammo that it likes. It is a little bit more fussy than the other one, but not. Well, if it's SK long range or R50, it shoots it very well. The Midas Plus I've had for it, yeah, fantastic. Right, let's find the target. There it is. Oh, I will need to get you onto that target as well, won't I? Hope you won't be able to see it. So, 1710, 1761 is the one on the right again. We'll start off with a sort of body shot if you like. So if we go away from the 50 yards let's find the one at 100 which also has conveniently a wood flat. So let's see that should do it. It's going to stay there in the wind. Yeah, looks like it's settled down okay. So, starting on the right, 1761, 102 metres. I'm going to dial this 2.5, just because I think it's a little bit slower. I haven't taken this one out there with, that, with this ammo yet, but we're about to find out. So red dot will be my first first five and we'll see how we go. We've got to hold for the wind. And we'll just keep it there I suppose. Seeing what am I seeing? 0.5 on wind drift. Even though that flag isn't showing a lot. That looks like it went through the first hole. So four within an inch and one dropping low. So if you was taking a body shot, that would be one dead rabbit. So that's five there. Now let's get a little cocky and see if we can get five headshots. We can gonna be holding for the wind and a little bit of elevation. So Let's see if I can pull off five headshots. That's one. Ooh, just two. Whiskers. Let's 
straight through the eye. Last one. Mm. I think that would have knocked it out. So, what do I think? I think that would have been 10 out of 10. Shooting it like that at 100 meters, looking at where they've all landed. Well, yeah, I think that would have been 10 out of 10. The bullets cut the line on the top of the head. So I think that would have been 10 out of 10, just. So let's see how the Kelby gets on. Hopefully you can see those impacts. So we're now going... Well, the one, come on, come back. The one on the right hand side. Now, the only reason I'm shooting them from this sort of position is just to rule out human error as much as possible. Parallax. Yeah. Right. So Kelby, same ammo, same distance. Let's see if one really outdoes the other. Okay, that would have been a fail, but then again it was shooting a little bit to the left at 50, so it's probably me not zeroing it completely, so we're aimed dead centre again. One. So that's two. I think the wind's been kind and just pushed me over. So I would say that that was a tighter group. Not particularly well placed, maybe. I forgot this one's got a tent. Oh. These ones have 10 round magazines as the 1761, doesn't it? So, headshots. Five at the head. Let's see what it does. Oh! <laughs> Missed! That one's gone high, pierced its ear. And that one's missed as well. Now, I don't know if you can see that wind flag, but no, hopefully it'll drop away. Dead where I was aiming at his eye. Pierced his ear again. Oh, 
well. <laughs> I think that just goes to show the luck of the draw with hunting ammo. First five done very well, next five not so good. But there we go, there's a real world expectation of the difference between the two rifles. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> I thought that was going to be better. Should have tried five more. I'm going to put five more on camera because I think the wind was very unkind to me on that. I think that's why it went so awry. On the bottom of that rabbit target, where I think it says 1710, this is zero. I'm just going to see if this ammo and rifle will redeem itself. Come here, please. Or I redeem myself, whichever. So down the bottom where it says 1710, I'm going to aim at the zero. Just to see whether that was me or the gun. Wind seems to have dropped. Just above the zero, looks like. A little bit faster than I expected. There comes the wind again. Not a lot. Underneath the zero. Bloody hell, that hit the board. I think I've hit a bad run of bullets. That one's hit the zero. That one's gone high. Now oh well. Hunting ammo, it is what it is. I think if you was long range sniping, I would definitely use R50 or SK long range match, much past 100. But there we go. Hope you enjoyed the little comparison. Cheers and gone.